Good evening, everybody. Glad to be on right here. We're testing out the live stream as we speak. Making sure all the volumes go up. Yep, it looks like everything's good to go. All right. Fantastic. All right. Welcome, everybody. We're up here for a uh, lessons live cast. We'll be uh, going through some uh, lessons later. Of course, we are going to do a lesson later tonight. Um, try to be as brief with it as I can, but it is a pretty uh, exhaustive topic because I've been talking about it for the last week with people, <laughs> so it's been a bit of a mess, but uh, we just want to be able to encourage and we want to be able to help as many Christians as we can and be able to reach out to those who uh, would expect better from Christians in some ways. Um, and, and definitely we're here to help do that. Uh, before we get underway tonight, I asked folks to put their uh, collective prayer requests together. And Boyd, howdy, did we ever get a prayer request log? Um, I, it has been, it is a blessing to be able to go through so many good people and uh, to be able to pray for each and every one of these folks with their needs. Uh, if you have needs, just feel free to share them below here. Uh, we'll be glad to uh, get that out to the community and everybody will pray together. We'll all come together and pray about these things. I want to be able to start this off with prayer tonight because there is an absolute need for prayer and the building up of the body. Um, a lot of people ask me, why do you take prayer so seriously? I had people praying for me when nobody else would even talk to me. Um, and I know prayer works. Prayer is something that absolutely has to be uh, a part of the Christian's life. And we absolutely, positively have to be able to do our very best and give our very best to God. And uh, I'm glad so many of you guys are jumping in and logging in to be able to share in that. Uh, just remember to pray for one another and encourage one another in all things. Don't stop um, Don't stop believing that, uh, in prayer, definitely. God can answer anybody's prayer. And sometimes we don't recognize that. We think that we've got it all together and everything. But the truth is, you know... Um, God's there for us. God's watching out for us. He's watching our back when no one else is. So, definitely. Let's go ahead and have a look at our prayer list tonight. First off on my list, I, I definitely want to talk about Herbert. Uh, Herbert Sims is over in um, Greene County. Uh, he has a, a been in the hospital uh, the last couple of days. Uh, he honestly admitted he thought he was going to die. Uh, so we want to be able to pray for him and pray for his lovely wife, ask for them to uh, uh, be blessed by God, and uh, definitely to his healing continue. Uh, our friend and brother in Christ, Bill Sanders, um, had a, just a, a desire and a passion to share this one with about his daughter. She is currently uh, serving time and uh, is in need of a life change. And so we want to be able to pray for Bill and his family definitely for his daughter and uh, an open door there God's capable of changing lives uh, you're looking at proof right here uh, TJ Vaught and uh, he uh, mentioned uh, his neighbors Carrie and Tony McDaniel their son was going to a hospital tonight uh, he was experiencing some issues so they were taking him to the hospital definitely want to keep them in our thoughts and our prayers tonight uh, Brittany Epperson I uh, asked for prayers for her and her family. Uh, Patricia Montgomery, uh, her sister, we want to pray for her sister and her friend, both of which are sick. Uh, Vicki Anderson asked that we pray for her and also has an unspoken request. Uh, Sheila Chesser I asked for her uh, sister Vicki, uh, said she's been going through pain for the last two weeks, want to pray for her. Rose Preer, uh, Rose fell the other day and broke her ankle. Uh, <laughs> And and bless her heart, uh, she she she's a tough she's a tough cookie right there. She wants to be able to go and do. Well, she had some surgery done this morning. She is recouping well. We are definitely praying for her. Um, over especially the ladies from over at uh, Frost Arnett made sure that um, they wanted Rose to know that uh, they were praying for her and wanting uh, to wish her a speedy recovery as well. Tammy Campbell asked for uh, prayer for her son, John Dungeon. 
uh, please be in prayer for him. Uh, Michelle Shepherd asked for prayers for her son, Matt Mattingly, for his parents. Uh, Miss Sue Ellen, I uh, saw her jumping on here a minute ago. She has an upcoming procedure scheduled and asked to be in prayer for that. Uh, Barbara smith Wands, her granddaughter Evelyn, and she also asked for God uh, to put together something that was broken. Now, we don't have to answer those questions. We don't have to ask what that's about. We trust God to be able to fix what needs to be fixed. Um, uh, Patty Brown, uh, Patty May, uh, went to school with her. She asked for her uh, prayer for her husband, Brad. He's been working hard the last little bit, and so we definitely want to give him all the support and encouragement he needs as well. Uh, Miss B.J. Perkins asked for prayer for her uh, mother, Donna, who's having colon pain, and for her daughter, Avery, as well. Miss Judy from over at the church asked for our prayers, and we told her we sure would, and heaven knows we need to... Yeah, keep each other in line, Miss Judy. I need you around, so <laughs> you definitely keep me in line and uh, help me be able to do that, and I'll keep you in my prayers for sure. Elizabeth Hayden asked for prayers for her mother's illness and for her sister Lisa as well. Um, Kevin Shelton asking for her his uh, brother Pete. Uh, he's been having a lot of uh, problems lately and illness and, and definitely been fighting, and uh, he's a tough old bird too. I love Pete, and I love Kevin to death. They're two of my old running buddies from the day you see them up the road from with my older brothers and uh, definitely two men that I absolutely love and care for and definitely be praying for them as well uh, Miss Kim O'Banion asked for uh, her mother who had a procedure today it was very rough going uh, Miss Darlene Kaufman asked for prayers for her son, her son Marcus who has uh, tracheitis um, and definitely want to be praying for him and all that he is going through. He's, he's fighting the battle there and definitely want to be able to pray for their farm as well. Uh, Miss Debbie Mershon asked for prayers that she's been struggling, and only God knows, and she said, I know God will take care of it. Well, that's what we're going to say right here, right now. Debbie, we're praying for you and praying that God will help you pull through. Miss Nancy Ray asked for her aunt and uncle uh, to uh, be prayed for because they were experiencing illness. Miss PJ White asked for her prayers for her husband and her son as well. Uh, Melissa Matthews, my cousin from down in, in over in over in GA, over in Georgia, had an unspoken prayer request. And thank you, cuz, for watching and keep praying for us. Uh, and and Desiree Mars had an unspoken request as well. We want or we want to be able to pray for them as well. Uh, Rex Sowers had a uh, that's my cousin over in Frankfurt had a uh, unspoken request as well. Miss Paula Scott, uh, we had been talking on Messenger a little bit, and she has a very uh, heartfelt unspoken request uh, that we want to keep personal on that end. But she wants us to keep her in prayer as well. Uh, my sister Rhonda asked for prayers for her son Alex. Uh, he's been going through some struggles here lately, and definitely we can encourage and pray for him. Um, we have an unspoken request for a couple that is experiencing separation right now. Um, I know the couple personally. I love them very much, and um, I know that some of the battles that are going on there um, won't get into detail here that's not the place for that but God knows what's happening and we want to be able to give them over that whole family over to prayer um, we want to pray for the family of Stanley Lawson I uh, got word this morning that he had passed away I also want to ask for prayer for my dad and his battle with illness as well Ronnie Harmon he has uh, been fighting a battle with uh, COPD and with um, um, uh, with his liver and definitely want to be praying for him with everything that's going on there uh, he is suffering from stage 4 cirrhosis and uh, we want to be able to keep him in our thoughts and prayers as well um, definitely be thinking uh, also I'm getting ready to go to <laughs> Lord willing the creeks don't rise I'll be going to school tomorrow for another master's class uh, praying for that to go well and definitely for outreach uh, we've been blessed We've had our socks blessed off here in the last little bit with outreach and helping others. Please, please keep your uh, prayer, this uh, ministry of life lessons with biblical answers in your thoughts and prayers as we are seeking to do as much as we can uh, to be able to get the word 
uh, of Jesus Christ out to everybody we know and love and also to those folks that we don't even know but we do all of this free of charge every bit of this is done there's no cost uh, we don't ask for any donations if you want to contribute always feel free to let us know uh, everything that goes and is given to us goes directly into a fund specifically to fund any and everything that is being done here whether it's printing and ink or whether it's uh, getting paying for the web page or paying for materials or anything like that everything is used in that end um, one of the things that we're looking forward to doing as well later on Lord willing uh, we want to be able to uh, uh, get copies of a really good book called Muscle and a Shovel um, and, and out to people uh, in the next little bit. I'm praying with that. I'm going to talk to the uh, author of that book to be able to encourage uh, and outreach to them. If you haven't read that book, if you would like to know more about that book, just send me a message called Muscle and a, Sh uh, uh, called Muscle and a Shovel. It's absolutely a must read for Christians. Uh, my buddy Jamie Rowland read it and he said he loved it. Thought it was one of the best books he ever read. Um, and, and definitely I want to encourage anybody that wants to read that to be able to read that. And uh, if I can get that in your hands, I'll do everything I can to get that in your hands. Um, also, we want to pray for the folks that were in the, involved in the California shooting today. Uh, we had another school shooting. I uh, haven't got much updates on that, but um, they did capture the uh, young man that was doing that. Uh, also want to pray for our friends and brothers in the uh, Greene County Fire Department and for the family of uh, Jonathan Porky uh, Davenport. Um, he, um, we, you know, the, the Greene County Fire Department's really, really tore up about that. So we definitely want to be able to encourage them. I know uh, the brothers over here in the uh, Taylor County Fire Department also want to wish you and encourage you guys as well, wish you the very best and pray with you all. Um, and we definitely want to be able to outreach in that. And lastly, I want to pray for uh, our state leadership. Now, uh, Governor Bevan conceded today uh, after some uh, contention and uh, definitely uh, the last week or so has been very, very difficult um, as far as um, the feelings of some of the people here in the state of Kentucky. We want to pray for not just um, the incoming people. We want to pray for those that are outgoing as well. Um, um, I've got friends that work in the cabinet that um, have worked there for four years and have really uh, endured and done an amazing job of encouraging and building up uh, the state of Kentucky. That doesn't mean that they're, um, you know, not going to, they're going to find different work and they're going to get involved in other things, yes. And we need to pray for them, but we also need to pray for the incoming administrations, uh, the people that are getting ready to take new positions, whether that is the governor, whether that is the attorney general, uh, whether that is the uh, members of uh, the Secretary of State, anything like that, anything and everything, our House, our Senate, we want to pray for each and every one of them because we know that is not an easy job. Um, I'm thankful to have two wonderful representatives um, that I know and care about very much here in Bam Carney as our uh, House member and then definitely I've known uh, Max, I've known Max Wise. I won't say how long, Max. <laughs> We've known each other since college, I'll say that, because, brother, I'll tell you, uh, we don't want to let our age out there. So uh, we do want to say that um, my, my family in particular, um, we owe a debt of gratitude to Max and his family and to Bam and his family, and definitely we know that you guys are doing the work uh, that a lot of us tend to ignore. So we want to be able to thank you guys for all that you do, and we want to thank each and every member of the House, Senate, and any of the other parts of state government that we overlook sometimes uh, that are doing the job uh, to pray for them and encourage them. And they'll be talked about a little more tonight. We'll, we'll get into that later. 
Right now, though, I just want to take time out. Let's go ahead and stop what we're doing and um, get into the Word and just take time out to pray. You know, God says, pray without ceasing, okay? We shouldn't stop praying just because we think our prayers aren't getting answered. We need to take time out to recognize that those prayers are important. And to each one of these people that are on here and each of the people that they're praying for are souls that are precious to God. Every one of them need to be prayed for, bathed in prayer, given over to God, given over to the throne of grace and mercy, and to be able to allow God to work his will in their lives. He knows before we do, but one thing's for certain. He wants us to come with open hearts to him. As we get ready to go into prayer, let us have our hearts open. Let's get ready. Let's study and get ready to be a part of God's kingdom tonight. But moreover, let's just take time out to remember all of our friends and our family that are on here and uh, all that we've got to think about tonight. Almighty God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your throne, to come before the mighty throne of grace and mercy. Father, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve the opportunity to come around. But yet, Lord, we are blessed beyond measure to come before you, to have the courage to stand here and and to be able to know that you are the reason for that courage. You're the reason for the encouragement. You're the reason for all the joy that we have in our lives. Father, as we go and and we go through our days, we might overlook some things. We may forget who's in charge. We may forget that with all the stuff that's going on in this world with shootings and with people getting upset at one another and yelling at one another and, and fighting on two sides of the aisle, Father, none of that's important. You are. You're important. And Father, that means we need to be able to trust your will. All this world is temporary, every bit of it. Father, for those that are suffering this day, for those that are hurting, we know that your care is there for them. We know you love us and you'll guide us and direct us as you see fit. Father, I just ask that you bless those people that are having difficulties today. Father, if they're having illnesses, if they're having sickness, if they're having pain, if they've been going through treatments, if they've got upcoming procedures, Lord, be with them and strengthen them. Be with their physicians and help guide their hands. Help guide their minds and their hearts to be able to serve and work your will. Lord, we just ask your blessings upon those folks that have asked for prayer this evening for those folks that are hurting and suffering, for those that need to know the glory of God, for those that are going through the suffering and the pain and the trials by fire, Lord, that come with going and living in this world. Father, may you inspire and renew us. And Father, may we be able to be revived and be able to bring the word to people who need to hear the message of Jesus Christ who need to hear of salvation, who need to hear of the truth, who need to see the truth in action. May we be the people of God that this world needs. And may we honor you and praise you in every step we take, in every breath we take. Every word that is uttered, may it go to glorify your name. And Lord... We are so splintered by the divides of man. Whether those are political divides, whether those are divides based on our faith, whether those are based on our choices, Lord. May we seek to be united as you and your son are united. It was his prayer in the garden that we be one body. Father, may your church represent that love and may it represent that truth. May we quit 
calling ourselves by names other than yours. May we look to you as the means of salvation. And may those people who have differences, who are worried, who are stressed, who are being called out by so-called believers that are hearing and, and not seeing the gospel being lived out, may we be the example to them. Father, I pray for our people in this state and in this nation that we all be revived. And Lord, I ask with all my heart that you help guide our leaders, help right the ship, not based on a party affiliation, but based on your word, your eternal world, your eternal word. Our citizenship is in heaven according to the book of Philippians. Father, may we be acting worthy of that citizenship. And may we praise your name now and always in everything we say and do. Father, be with us the remainder of this night as we get into the word. We love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whew, sorry about that, guys. I get a little excited, as I say, when it comes to prayer. But I'm going to do my best to do what I do. And what I do is to be able to go through God's Word. You know, people ask, well, what does a preacher do? Why does a, does a preacher just preach on Sunday? Does a preacher just go and... Um, do his thing and that's it during the week no no preacher's job never ends and I'm thankful for that I'm supposed to be an example now I'm going to admit something to y'all I fail every day I fail every day at it there was a time in my past when I had issues with calling people names or putting labels to them. If I didn't agree with you, it was because maybe you were liberal. And so the word liberal became a derogatory term. I want to apologize for that. I will never use the word liberal as a derogatory word again. And I mean that. Because I have witnessed this week some really bad things. Some really, really bad things from Christians. And it breaks my heart. We'll talk more about them in a minute. I want to start the lesson off tonight. I want to read something to you here. This might seem off topic a little bit, but once you start hearing what I've got to talk about, you'll understand what I'm getting at here. UC Berkeley instructor calls rural Americans bad people who deserve uncomfortable lives. Now we here, being in Kentucky, generally are rural people. I know in my neck of the woods in Campbellsville, we're rural as can be. You can tell by my accent. I don't take talking too seriously. Except when it comes to talking God's word. A UC Berkeley graduate student and instructor took the, it took the Twitter to shame rural Americans and those who aren't pro-city, as he put it, pro-city. Jackson Kernian, who reportedly taught at least 11 philosophy courses at the California University, made the comment last Wednesday. I, I unironically embraced the bashing of rural Americans, he wrote in a now-deleted tweet. They, as a group, are bad people who have made life bad life decisions, and we should shame people who aren't pro-city. Hmm. He went on to say that after, uh, after going on about these rural citizens, stating that they should have higher health care, 
pay more taxes, and be forced to live an uncomfortable life for rejecting efficient city life. He since took that tweet down and apologized. He said, my tone is way crasser and meaner than I like to think I am. Well, maybe that's an answer to prayer. Maybe he's finding out the hard way that that's not the way we need to be living. Now, folks, the reason I'm talking about that is because it isn't cool to be called something in a bad way, is it? It's not cool to be talked about in a bad way. As a rural person in the state of Kentucky, I take offense to that. But I also don't expect any different from the world. The world's going to be that way. We live in a fallen world. We understand that. We have to accept that. Yes, we should try to change this world through the teaching of Jesus Christ. We should try to reach out to every person we can and let them know that Jesus Christ is king and moreover that the word of God is def definitely the word of God, the word of truth, the word of inspiration, the divine word, the perfect word, which is the Bible. We need to have that. But the problem is that some Christians... I, I try to be nice about this. Some Christians are not allowing their talk to accompany their walk. Well, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And I love how Jesus lives in my life. But then you go and you look how they love people. And they don't. Or they don't show they love people. They call them names. They yell at them. They fuss about them. And some people say, oh, I'm just doing that in jest in front of them moreover because of them last week I had four friends write me either they wrote me and told me about it themselves or I saw it in their news feed they had voted for another party in the election here in Kentucky for governor and they were being called, and I quote, baby killers. Baby killers. For acting in their civil duty. Now, I may not agree with abortion. In fact, I hate abortion. You all know, if you know me personally, you know how I feel about abortion. I can't stand it. It's, uh, it is as close to a pagan ritual as you will find in modern America. It's Moloch worship, in my opinion. It's depraved and disgusting. But our battle, and I emphasize this, is not with people. Our battle is spiritual in nature. Our war is with Satan. Our war is with the people that are living, or the spirits that are living outside of this physical realm. You can read about that in Ephesians 6, 10 through 11 if you want to. This is a spiritual war that we're in. And it's a real one. A lot of people don't like hearing those things. Oh, come on, Robbie. You know that's just gobbledygook. That's just stuff that the people used to believe in back in the day. We don't have that kind of stuff going on. Wouldn't you like? Wouldn't Satan like you to believe that? Sure, he wouldn't. Then, if if we believe that and we're comfortable believing that, then oh well, you know, he can get away with whatever he wants. But isn't that what's happening today? I realize that Christians have had a lot, and I mean a lot, of pressure put on them in the course of the last 20 years. We have. I've watched as Christians have had to face an oncoming tide of debauchery and wickedness and sinful living. 
but it's just as much our fault for allowing that to take place as it is for the people who are living in it because we allowed it to happen. Oh, we are, we are a great country. We, we, we have freedom of religion and freedom and peace and, and we can go in, and freedom of speech and we can value those things. Yes, we can. I'm a proud American. But I also want to say this. I'm also a proud Christian first. My citizenship is in heaven first foremost. And as a ambas- an ambassador of Jesus Christ, it is my job to go and testify the kingdom rules. The kingdom rules are pretty simple. Love God and love people. There's no getting around that. There's no leeway there. There's no halfway mark. There's none of that. It's all what it's supposed to be it's all in there and it has to be there it has to be both God and people we can love God all we want to but if we're not loving people as well and we're not showing we love people we're not living the law we're not living the law of grace we're not living the law of Christ Christ said these two rules Go and center around everything. This is what the law is about. It can be summed up in these two things. Love God with all your heart. Love man. Love your neighbor as you do yourself. Do you want to be called a baby killer? Do you want to be called somebody that hates God? Do you want to be called a liberal? Do you want to be called a pinhead? Do you want to be called some, some word? Do you want to be called something that's out there that's going to degrade you or make you feel smaller than you are? Do you want that? I know you don't. But yet we've got Christians today that are going around doing that. And saying, I believe. If you believe, let's go over some scripture together. And not just believe, let's walk. Luke chapter 6, verse 31 through 42. Let's go there right now. It's over here on the side if you want to read along with me here. Luke 6, 31, 42. I will have this available online after uh, everything's done here. If you'd like a copy of that, it'll be on the Life Lessons website. You can go to that at myllba.com. You can go and download that in the handout section. It's got new right beside it. You can get that there. It's in there right now. As a matter of fact, if you want to go there and get that at this time, however you want to do, if you want to pay attention to the lesson, that's fine too. But let's go over Luke chapter 6, verse 31 to 42. Treat others the same way you want, to treat, you, you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Or even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you expect to receive... What credit is that to you? Even sinners lead to sin, lend to sender, sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend and expect nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he himself is kind for he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will be pardoned. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressing down, shaking together, and running over. By your standard of measure, it is measured to you in return. And he also spoke a parable to them, saying, A blind man cannot guide a blind man, can he? Will not both fall into a pit? 
A pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone after he has been fully trained will be like this teacher. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but don't notice the log that's in your own? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, when you yourself don't see the log that's in your own? You hypocrite. Take first the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Sermon on the Mount is found in Matthew chapter 5 as well, through 7, chapter 5 through 7 there. This verse parallels what's in Matthew chapter 7. But I want to talk about what those words say. It doesn't matter which one you look at. A lot of people use this as a means to say, See, see, you can't judge me. Yes, we can. We can judge based on the fruit. If you're not having fruit, if you're not producing the fruit God wants you to produce, you'll see it. And that fruit is always there. It's always hanging there right in front, right center, in what you say and what you do and how you act in it. But I'm told to be angry. I'm told I can be angry. I'm told that all I've got to do is, is just show righteous anger. What's righteous anger? You know, I get that quite a bit. You know, I can show anger. I can be angry. I can do that. I can go and do that, right? I can be angry. Because I, as long as I don't sin and be angry. Well, in verse 26 of Ephesians chapter 4, it's not unbiblical to be angry. In fact, we're told to be angry about certain things God's angry but God is a very angry and jealous God why is he angry because of the fall of mankind because of the sin of mankind because of man's complete denial of him and all the great works that he has done in this universe he's got a reason to be upset but We also have a right to be angry too. When we see people sinning, when we see people willfully going against God. Yeah, we should call people out. Not publicly though. We shouldn't make a big announcement about it. That's not what it's about. We're not told to make a big announcement and say, Hey everybody, look who's sinning now. In fact, Matthew, the book of Matthew, it tells you what to do. Pull your brother to the side and tell them that they're sinning. Start with relationships. Build your relationship with Christ and build your relationship with others. It's not unbiblical to be angry. However, it is not if we are going and living and being in that kind of godly anger that we're wanting to live by and be righteous angry. It is not explosive. It is not a heat of the moment reaction. It says in God's, it says in the Bible straight out, God is slow to anger. That doesn't mean that God doesn't get angry. It means his anger is held in check. Is your anger held in check? You see, when we go and we allow anger to dwell in us and we let that seethe and build over time and stew that leads to sin we're not called to do that we're called to live a different life we're called to live a righteous life but 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 jesus called people names i get that a lot too jesus called people names I get this one a lot. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint and cumin and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, just and faithfulness. But these are the things that you should have done without others. You're, you blind guides, you strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! 
for you clean the outside of uh, uh, the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first clean inside the cup and of the dish, so that the outside of it may be cleaned also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. I get that a lot. See, see, Jesus called people names. He called them vipers and serpents, and he called them uh, hypocrites, and he called, yeah. Who was Jesus talking to? That's the question I'm asking there. Who does Jesus call out? Does Jesus call the lost people that? Does Jesus call out the lost people and say, well, you hypocrite? He's talking to the people that already know God. He's talking to the religious people. Just like I'm talking to religious people. Just like I'm talking to people who live by faith. That know what the word says. They understand what God's word says. And knows that there are implications when you go and you sin. It's something we have to do. Woe to you, scribes. Woe to you, Pharisees. Woe to you, modern church. Woe to you for going and passing over people and calling them names because you don't agree with them. And you want to feel like you're better and holier than thou. Shame on you. Does that mean we don't call sin, sin? No. Sin is still sin no matter how you look at it. Adultery is still adultery. Homosexuality is still homosexuality. Alcoholism is still alcoholism. You can be drunk, you can be stoned, you can be looking at porn, you can be in an adulterous relationship, you can do all that stuff. That's all sin. And that's not stuff you want to be in. You have to be willing to change. The problem is, in our bodies, it's like um, I was reading something that a friend of mine said on a friend of mine on a Facebook said earlier today, I was reading through and he put on there, he said that, and he was writing a note about, that was in a book and it said that man, the Christian man, the Christian person has two bodies residing in him, the old man and the new man the old man always wants to come up the old man always wants to try to fight the old man always wants to try to get his way while the new man strives to change and be different the new man is the one we put on when we are immersed into Christ when we become one in the body when we come one in spirit with Christ Jesus and we come up out of the water and we live in the newness of life, once we've been transformed, once we've been changed, once the indwelling Holy Spirit is in there, we're supposed to be different. The problem is many times we cling on to some of the things that we're comfortable with. One of the things we're most comfortable with is putting other people down because we don't agree with them. We let stereotypes guide us. Guys, we can't let those happen. We need to love the people that are lost. We don't need to love their sin. We need to love them. Remember, we're in a spiritual battle. We're not in a battle against people. We're in a battle against Satan. And so we need to be able to love people and care for people no matter what they look like, no matter what they've been through, and no matter what kind of addictions or what kind of uh, ideas they have. We need to be better Christians. All of us. Me included. I have to preach this to me first, you know. I have to be better. 
I have to be more understanding of people's needs. And so do you. That is what we are called to do as Christians. We are called to be different. And that means we love people and we share the gospel with them. They may not accept it. They may not see the need to change. But we can plant the seeds. But that requires us to be living lives that are truly visible in Christ Jesus. Matthew 5, 43-45 says, have you, you have heard it said before, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You know, I don't think we take that too seriously these days. We'd rather stick our nose up at the enemy or say we're better than them. No, we're not. You know, it says on there, it says right there, you know, that God causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. He sends the rain and the righteous and the unrighteous. In God's position, he looks down on us. Everybody looks the same from God's angle. Not taller, not smaller, not shorter, not fatter. No. We all look the same. Because he built us the same. He made us in his image. And we're supposed to love him. And we're supposed to love one another. You see, we have to be able to walk the Christian walk. And talk the Christian talk. You know, I go back to the book of Proverbs and I look at some of the wisdom that's said back there about wh what we do when we use our language, when we use the words we have. You know, Proverbs twelve eighteen says, There is one who speaks rashly like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Do you want to bring healing to people? Or do you want to thrust swords in their back with the use of your tongue? He who despises his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding keeps silent. Proverbs eleven twelve, Or what about Proverbs 15, 1? A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh answer stirs up anger. If I called you a barefoot hippie liberal when you weren't one, and used it in a condescending tone, wouldn't that offend you? I've been called a liberal by many people. They said, man, I don't want to be politically correct. I want to be, yeah, I want to be, I want to be right. If you want to be right, then you'll live by God's word. You'll be biblically correct. Well, being biblically correct is going and doing this right here by applying Scripture to your life. And that means watch your tongue. Watch your language. Watch the words you use. Watch the things that you say about other people and how we need to be involved in our relationship with Christ and how we need to speak our relationship with Christ. Don't be afraid to do that. But don't go and cast out people and call them names and call them out and put labels on them and stereotypes on them. That's not the answer. Our judgments speak volumes. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. You're the church, right? If you're the church, you're going to be in worship every day that you live. You're the temple, right? Then that means God resides in you. You better let him shine. Let them see him in you. Don't let them hear the old man talk. Be willing to give your best to God. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. 
I don't think we teach Romans 12 enough. It is our responsibility to be a response to the world through grace. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. If somebody doesn't agree with you, don't take the cheap way out. My goodness. My daughters the other day were fighting in here. And, and, and my 12-year-old daughter Rose said, well, Livy started it. Livy is five years old. The 12-year-old needs to be the example. It needs to be the example. The 12-year-old needs to be the older example, the wiser example. Don't argue. Don't go and start calling others the names. But they started it. No. Read what that says. Do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. It does depend on you. We need to be living in peace with all mankind. We need to be living in peace and being true. Never pay back evil for evil. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the God, wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Did you catch that? We're not supposed to call out God's creation, mankind. We're not supposed to look at them and cause more fire in their head by being by aggravating them and making them angry or making them bitter and want war. Do you realize how many times I hear a day I don't go to church because of the hypocrites in there? Yes, it is a terrible, terrible excuse. I understand that. But the more I hear from Christians, the more I start seeing the hypocrisy coming out. And I see what these people are talking about. Number one right here. That means we've got to change. Romans 14, 1 through 12 goes in further talking about to judge with righteous understanding and love. It means we need to live a life that's different from the world. Now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment of his opinions. One person has faith that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats. For God has accepted him. Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master, he stands and he falls. And he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person regards one day, another, another. Another regards every day alike. Each person must be f fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day, observe it for the Lord. And he who eats does so for the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who eats not for the Lord, he does not eat. He gives thanks to God. For not one of us li lives for himself, not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. For in this end, Christ died and lives again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? 
For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall praise to give praise to God. So then each one of us will give an account to himself to God. If somebody's not living a moral life, our job is not to point that out and tell them, look, you're going to hell. Our job is to row. God is the rudder. God is doing the steering. We are doing the rowing. And that means we've got to be willing to go out there and row to people and talk to them and tell them and show them through our actions, through our eyes, through our lives, through our words that Jesus Christ is alive. And we should be willing to show that we are willing to commit to that and be willing to be the sacrifice, to willing to sacrifice everything we've got in order that Jesus might be glorified. Everything should go to his glory. Every word we say, including how we address people and label people, We can be the exception that proves the rule. Now that can be done positively or negatively. Depends on you. James 3.10 says, No one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Father and Lord. And with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. For the same mouth comes both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Boy, if James could just step on our toes just a little more. To all those people that are calling people baby killers. Read my lips. Stop it. Don't say it because, don't think I'm saying it because I'm trying to be politically correct. Oh, no, no, no. It's sin. What is sin is sin, but we need to respect God first and his creation second. His word says, don't go out there don't chastise, don't criticize, don't yell, don't label. He says, go to them. Be peaceful. Be understanding. And be committed to me. That's what God wants. He wants us to be committed to him. Not to causes. Not to some principles that we think are morally righteous. folks there's going to be suffering in this world until the day it ends until the day he comes home until the day he takes us home there is going to be war and rumors of war there is going to be anguish there's going to be suffering there's going to be innocence lost there's going to be lives taken God said that and so we need to be able to be responsible with that and bring souls home we can't bring souls home by calling names we bring souls home by being the hands the feet and yes the voice of Christ in this world no one can tame the tongue no man can but God can Titus 3.2 says, Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, and to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for some men, for a few men, for all men, for every man, woman, child on this planet Ephesians 4 31 through 32 is an exceptional example here let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you 
along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiven of each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Maybe we need to learn that again. There are Christians today in the church that hate each other. Why? You're going to let hate kill what could possibly be an eternal relationship not just with your brother in Christ but with God don't do that don't give in to that that's Satan working in you our battle is spiritual Colossians 3.12 reads so all those who have been chosen by God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and, pa and patience, bearing with one another, forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against another, uh, just as the Lord forgave you, you should also forgive. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Love same love that Christ has for you and me the same love that he was willing to go and die on the tree of Calvary for you and me the perfect bond of unity and lastly as Philippians 4 8 through 9 reads Brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. This world is bitter, it's cold, it's angry. Don't be like it. Our citizenship is in heaven. Philippians 4, 8, and 9 says, whatever is worthy of praise, think about those things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I read a post the other day, and someone gave me a really understandable reason why we need to be vocal. They said that they were afraid, that their fear was for the children that are being killed every day that are being slaughtered and I said you know who we need to put our trust in then you see that's something we don't do we talk a mean game sure we say oh yeah I believe I believe do we I mean do we really believe why are we all worried every day? Well, I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried. Guys, I know about worry. I take anxiety medicine, I know. Well, you ain't much of a Christian. You're over here taking medicine for anxiety. Yeah. You know why? Because I let that world kill me. That world tore me up so badly, and I trusted in politics and trusted in all the wrong things for far too long now I've given my trust to God my faith is in him I trust and obey and love the Lord with all my heart and moreover everything I do and everything I say and every action I take and every breath I take every move, every wink, every tug every tittle, every dot is crossed every T is dotted <laughs> whatever you want to say however you want to say it it's done because God is good and God is trustworthy Take it to his throne first. If we have people that hate us, if they don't like us, take it to the throne of God. Share them with the throne and be the example of Christ to them. I know what it's like to be hated. 
I know what it's like to be looked at and called names. And I know what it's like to be bitter. We can't do that. We can't let the bitterness kill us. We can't let division kill us. If we are to be the church that Christ wants and the body that Christ prayed for in the Garden of Gethsemane, in John chapter 17, he said, May we be may they be united as you and I are, Father. As they are one, we should be one. Are you up to that challenge? Are you up to taking that task at hand? You know, I prayed about this for a week now. I recognize there are people going to be looking at me tomorrow and saying, huh, did you hear that liberal talking on the radio the other night? You hear that liberal talking on Facebook the other night? I hope they do. I hope they call me a liberal all the way from New York to California. Because there's one place I will never, ever, ever be conservative in. And that's loving people and loving God. May I be the biggest barefootest liberal of them all when it comes to loving God and loving people. Because that's what I'm commanded to do. And you are too. Folks, thank you for listening tonight. I know this ain't an easy thing to listen to. We've gone an hour and some change over. But I feel like it's necessary. I'm passionate about people and I'm passionate about Christ. I want his church to be just as passionate. I recognize that's hard to do. Some people want to say, well, that's radical. We can't do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You've just got to let go and trust in God. I pray that you will do that today, that you'll take that very serious. I'm praying for each and every one of you tonight. I know I've prayed for the folks that are on this prayer list, but I also pray for each and every one of you who listen tonight, even for a few minutes of this. And I will be posting it on YouTube as well because I feel like it's that important. Christians, we need to start living like Christians again. You know, I, I think about what my friend Jason's wife Mandy said the other night. She uh, she referred to people as Pharisees in the modern world and I, I had a uh, I felt a bit anxious about that at first because I was like, oh, some of these people are my friends that I'm looking at here and saying that about. I have to say about me too. I've been a Pharisee in the past. It's time to stop being Pharisees in the modern world. It's stop being and stop being serpents and stop being hypocrites and stop being whitewashed tombs. Yeah, we look pretty on the outside, but what are we inside? That's what God sees. And that's what matters. I pray that you'll take that into consideration tonight. God bless you guys. I'm going to post this and leave this on here, like I said, on my Facebook page, but I'll put it on YouTube as well. Thank you for praying for me and praying with me. This has taken a lot. Because I'll tell you, I don't want to see anybody go to hell. I already was on the road there once. I don't want to go back. And I don't want you to go either. Please, if you want to make a commitment tonight, if you need to change, message me tonight. Talk to me. Get on Facebook. Look up Robbie Harmon message me send me a message 
If you need to be able to talk about loving God, knowing more about Him, I got all night. I don't care. But I care about you. Your salvation matters. You matter. Thank you again for listening. If you'd like more information about what I do and what we do at Life Lessons with Biblical Answers, you can always go to our website. It's right over here in the corner, right down here below. Well, I'll get it right here in a minute. There we go. Right here? Yeah, there we go. Right down here. See? There you go. Right down there at the bottom, myllba.com. There's all sorts of free stuff there. Nothing charged. No charge whatsoever. We're about getting the message of Jesus Christ to people. We're not about money. We're not about politics. We're not about all that other stuff. We're about Jesus. And that's what we want the world to be about. And what we want the church to be about. Take time out for one another. To build the body and strengthen it. If you want any more information, I'll be posting the uh, links to uh, the verses I used tonight. They'll be on Facebook as well. Uh, they'll be in the YouTube uh, column once I get it uploaded. I am going to upload some more stuff. I see George Severin popped on here. God bless you, George. Thank you again for a revival this past week. See what you did? You got me all fired up, boy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, that's what it takes. It's time to get fired up. I'm going to put some of Georgia's sermons on there as well from this past week. i uh, be working on that after school tomorrow night uh, and uh, after uh, school on Saturday. So, guys, take time out to pray for one another encourage one another. We love you. We're praying for you. And may God bless you in your journey. Have a great night.